Hello everyone and welcome to part two of my Q&A session. I thought I'd just show you a few of the vacuums I grabbed hold of and, and brought downstairs. They're just a few that I've got to hand. I've got tons more of course, but these are a few I just could grab quickly. Um, a lot of them you haven't seen yet, including this Hoover Turbo Power Freedom, bagless turbo power. This uh, Hoover Dual Purpose, which is, uh, if you're watching in the USA, that's based I believe on Hoover Legacy video of that coming up quite soon. A vintage 1960s Hoover shampoo polisher. That Electrux glider, you've recently seen that. Uh, you'll have seen that mm, very recently because I'm hoping to put that up today actually. A new vac by Pneumatic. This one will be coming up quite soon. Uh, the Hoover Junior exclusive but this looks a lot shinier than it did in the video and it's also got I'll show you it's also got well I've fitted a new belt but it's also got a brand new activator brush roll and this one does actually work pretty well on the carpet maybe for the last video I might uh, turn a few of these on for you uh, this is my air belt D for premium but I was going to turn it on so you could Hang on, just going to, there we are. I meant to have that going on in the background, you see, that's standby. This, you've seen a very similar one on my channel ages and ages ago, but this is the later version. I thought I'd try it. It's no different, really. This is the lower wattage one. Very good, but very big. Of course, the Dyson 360i, that's a little bit battered. <laughs> Got that recently. Came intact, though. That was uh, amazing. Hoover exclusive. Still mean to do a video on this, a Vorwerk. Of course, a video of that's coming up. Trilobite, you've seen a video on that. So that's all I, I sort of brought down. If you want to see the mess, this is behind the scenes mess, look. Ooh, mess. And uh, we can just step over. Oh dear, let's move that mains cable out of Daisy's bed. Oh Daisy, I'm sorry to disturb. Here we have Daisy May. And over here, we have Molly Poorth. Right, oh dear, that's, uh, that's a quick look at some vacuums. Let's get on with answering your questions. Okie dokie, so Andrew Essen, I am a new subscriber, found your review on the Henry Pet. Bought one New Year's Eve, house is now free of cat hair, great stuff. Well, I hope, Andrew, that you've uh, found the larger nozzle you can get for the Henry Pet because I don't recommend that small turbo nozzle you get with it. Um, yeah, you could do with getting the larger one. You'll find that lot, a lot better. Uh, here we go. Lewis or Louis Williams, I have a few questions for you, Roger. One, if you had to pick, if you had to pick one vacuum to use in your home, which vacuum would you buy and why? Oh, crikey. Um, I can't, I can't. I can't answer. I can't possibly imagine only having one vacuum. That's a nightmare. Right, well, if I only had to have one, it would have to be a German make and it would have to be a bagged machine. Uh, and because Miele don't do powerhead cylinders anymore, I would still need Well, I have to say, although it's, it's got its pros and cons, it would have to be this, to be honest. It's a good job I've got one out, the, the Cebo D4 Premium. Um, I would go for that because in a way it is, although it's bigger, in a way it is easier to use than the more compact E4. Is it E4 Premium? E3 Premium. Um, the E3 Premium does have the thick, thick hose, which is a bit awkward um, on a compact vacuum. This has the huge, thick tapered hose but it's less obtrusive on this large cleaner this also has a much longer mains cable a bigger bag um, so yeah if that was the only cleaner I'd get this and then I'd buy some of the additional tools uh, you know um, ex extension hose well I've got them all anyway but you know if that was my only one so yeah at the moment it would be it would be that um, I think, but I can't bear to think. The skip lorry's gone. I wonder who got the skip. Um, 
Life with just one vacuum cleaner is unthinkable for me and for a lot of you watching. So don't upset me like that. Um, right, second question. When will you be doing a demo of Pneumatic Charles? Well, I know pneumatics are popular and I, yes, I know it's on, oh, I can't say when, but it is one I want to do a demo of. I've got other pneumatics I want to demo. I want to show Charles picking up uh, water. I can't say when. I can't even say this year. Hopefully this year. Uh, question three, do you prefer cordless or corded vacuums and which ones? Corded, definitely corded. I prefer corded, but I like cordless as well for, you know, different things. Corded for a thorough, proper clean where you're not worrying that your battery's gonna run down and cordless for the daily pickups. Cordless or a robotic cleaner for the daily, you know, I, quite, I use a Roomba quite a lot in my kitchen. I've got one in there now. Often turn that on and just let it do the kitchen and I use other robotic vacuums and they're more for a novel, novelty really that I use those. Um, uh, which ones? Again I'm gonna have to say shark. I know I get shark, I, I get a lot of shark cleaners um, given to me but I ha before I got, before shark started giving me cleaners I did buy an awful lot with my own money um, and I still, if, even if Shark didn't um, give me them to review, I still would buy them. Um, as far as, you know, you know, they may not have the technology of Dyson, but as far as something I use a lot more, I do use the latest, I didn't bring it down, but it is upstairs, um, the latest Shark cordless that I showed you around about Christmas, New Year time. I think it was sort of sometime in December, you can check that. I haven't done a proper demo of that, but that is the one I just grab because it does work on this plush carpet. The Dyson, if you saw that video, it doesn't work unless it's on the Eco. Um, I did use the Dyson at the weekend to clean uh, the car out, and it, but it, I needed the flexible hose I bought because it's no good without hose. And it did a fine job, it lasted well enough, I'm very happy with it. Um, I sometimes use the V10 more than the V11, but yeah, for I would go for the Shark with the twin battery. That's the one I do, honestly, genuinely, that's the one I grab. And as far as a corded vacuum, I just grab whatever I fancy using, so I don't have one specifically, you know. I have used the Hoover Junior recently that I got, the Dirt Searcher. Um, what other cleaners have I used recently? Mm. Professional dual purpose, I've used that a few times, but only because I've, I've recently unboxed it. Um, and turbo power I've used, you know, it just, I just use whatever takes my fancy when it comes to a mains powered, but for general quick whipping round, I tend to use the Shark um, with the anti-hair wrap, um, or run the Roomba, or sometimes my Nito, and I have been using the Dyson 360i, mainly upstairs because, as I said, I think yesterday, or the video before this one anyway, doesn't work very well on this carpet. So, there you go. Luke King Kong. Uh, happy 2020. All the best for 2020. Thank you, Luke. My question, when will we see a vacuum with a little smiley face again? Here it, here it is, Luke. You might have already seen this before this video. So there you go. I assume you mean pneumatic. Well, it's a new vac, but it is pneumatic, obviously. So there we go. The uh, Memester. Have you ever heard of the of an American vacuum cleaner brand called ProTeam? I recommend checking them out. I think I've heard of them. I'm not sure if they're available in this country. Well, I've got the internet in front of me. Let's quickly look. I think they're commercial. Oh, well, there's, there's one come up on eBay. Pro Team, uh, Pro Team Super Coach Backpack Vacuum. No, I don't want one of theirs. It looks quite ugly. Yes, there's some available on Amazon, but they seem to be just showing backpack. And I have a pneumatic backpack vacuum. Currently unavailable. That looks like a monstrosity. I think my pneumatic one would be far easier to use than that. So, no, I think they're limited availability, I would say. 
I have no interest, to be honest, in pro team. Um, who knows? I never say never, though, but at the moment, it's very unlikely I will be getting a pro team vacuum. Moafax, hello, Roger. Greetings from Australia. I would like to know what computer do you use and which edi editing software. Also, please shout out my other channel, Moafax Gaming. Love your videos. Might one day send a vacuum from Australia as we also use 230 volts. Bye for now, Ralph. Well, Ralph, um, I do have, I use Apple Mac Macintosh, if they still call them, Apple products. This. This is probably what I'm using most of. MacBook, it's a MacBook Pro. I don't know what model, but it was, when I bought it, it was the top, whatever the top model was at the time. It's a couple of years old or at least a year old. Um, I do have a, um, an iMac upstairs, a desktop one with a big screen. But I find, I mean, it's, I tend to use this more now because I can take it with me when we go on holiday to edit videos in my caravan, when I go caravanning. And it's just easier to have on my lap or on a little table and edit stuff down here in my living room rather than being stuck upstairs on a desk. So I tend to use this, the MacBook Pro, and I just use the included um, iMovie software. I might upgrade to uh, Final Cut Pro, I think it's called, but at the moment it suits my needs. So that's what I use. And I don't use Apple because I'm, a, I'm an Apple fanboy. I just use Apple because I've always had Apple stuff from the earlier days of computing. Um, the first computer I went on the internet with was an Apple computer, an Apple Centris, I think it was. It wasn't even, the com it was just the box it was a cream colored box and you had to have a separate monitor and keyboard and everything but my first apple apple computer was one of the apple classics with a black and white display that my brother gave me because i got all my brother's hand-me-downs you see and he was really into apple so basically i got sort of into the apple ecosystem and i couldn't work out how to use a, a microsoft pc or whatever now so i will i just keep apple stuff because that's what i'm used to right uh tech uh, builder happy new year uh do you often make videos only i'm not sure what what that means do i often make videos only i do often make videos yes becco mad what washing machines has your mum owned and what washing machines have you owned and what is my favorite elvis song I think this is from a gentleman called Craig, if I'm not much mistaken. Um, my mum, from what I can remember, and I don't know the model number, but the earliest washer I remember having was a Hoover, um, probably an 800 spin Hoover. It had a square door and the door catch was actually a slider. Washing machine fans will, will know. It was probably a Hoover Automatic 800 or something. And I think it had a sort of a silvery color control panel. And there was a little bit of an, I think the Hoover logo was orange. I'm not sure. And I'm not sure if it even had a, a drawer. Back in the day, you had to just put the powder in the drum with, a, with the earlier automatics. This would have been in the early seventies. But yes, it definitely had a square door that was that stood proud. It wasn't flush like the later Hoover square doors and I'm pretty sure it had that chrome catch that you push to one side to open the door. No idea what the model, pretty sure it was an 800 spin, but she also had the Hoover Autojet dishwasher next to it, the one that had the um, round baskets, certainly the lower basket was round, I think the upper basket was. I think that was made by Zanussi though, before Hoover started making their own. Um, then from that one, well, the only other ones I remember from that one, then she had a brand some of you won't have heard of, Philco. She had, and I know the model number, I remember the model number. She had a Philco W45A, which was similar, I believe, to a Bendix, Bendix machines in the UK. And then after the Philco, she definitely had, because I helped choose it, uh, an all white, Hoover Computer Control 1100, she had that from the 80s, that lasted at least 10 years. 
Then after the Hoover Computer Control 1100, she had a Hoover New Wave, whatever the top of the range New Wave was. Unfortunately, I liked that machine, but that didn't last very long. And after the Hoover New Wave, she had the Bosch Max, which I did a video of. And then after the Bosch Max, which I've also done a video of, she's got a Miele washer dryer, which uh, she inherited. So she hasn't had a huge amount of washing machines. I can't remember any others, but I expect she had, um, after the Hoover Automatic, she might have had another Hoover Automatic. But it's possible that the Hoover Automatic I first remember did last, because they did used to last back then. So, mate, Hoover, Hoover's, a Philco, Bosch, then Miele. Yeah. Right, I think that's it. Oh, my favourite Elvis song, I don't have one, I'm afraid. I'm not, uh, uh, I don't really, you know, I'm familiar with Elvis and his songs, but I, I don't have any Elvis albums. And I can't really think of that, uh, I Can't Help Falling In Love. That's quite nice, if that's the name of it. Um, probably that one, yeah. Will Alexander, hi Roger, I'm the biggest fan of you and I'm from Tasmania. I help the cleaners at my school. I use a ShadowVac or a PacVac SuperPro 700. I love them both. And I have a pneumatic Henry 200 HVR 200 and I love it. I have popped on a Wieselwerk turbine head. What vacuum do you have at your work? And also, have you ever used a pneumatic rucksack vacuum since the Christmas special? For my 11th birthday, I got a little desk Henry. I also love car detailing. I use our family Miele S5 to vac out our car and it does a good job. At every holiday I go, if I'm in Tasmanian or Tasmania, I take my Henry. But last time I couldn't, I think that is, and there was no vacuum I could use. So I just had to sweep, but they had a Henry 200 the same. I have, but it was all taped up and was not in good condition and the handle was one way up. Was the, probably he means the wrong way up. Well, you can put the handle either way on a Henry. How many times a week do you vacuum your house? I vacuum my house every day. Keep up your work from the biggest fan ever and the person how wants to meet you the most, Will. Well, Will, uh, what vacuum do I have at work? Well, the ones I've seen them using at work um, is a SIBO BS36. They might have a, a Henry type as well, but I've seen the BS36 most. I saw it when it was brand new and uh, didn't look brand new for long. It's a right mess now. I'd love to shake that home and give it a good clean, but it's not, not up to me to do that. Um, so that's the answer to that, I think. I don't think there was any others. That's it. So a SIBO BS36. And they, of course they use for washing the floors at work. They use one of those big push along things. I don't know what make it is. I think it's a uh, something, oh, it's a company that's gone out of business. I can't remember. One of those big push, push alongs. Uh, Rockstar, hi, I hope you had a great Christmas. Yes, it's so long ago, Chris. Oh, we didn't have a care in the world back then, did we at Christmas? Oh dear. It's amazing how things can change so quickly. Never mind. Um, hi, I hope you had a great Christmas and I'm curious about how well the Shark anti-hair wrap keeps the brush roll clean. I bought a Hoover Breeze Evo and so far I've been very impressed on how well it picks up. Is there any other vacuum that you don't recommend? Would you ever consider doing a comparison between the Shark vacuum cleaners that you own? Uh, what vacuums don't I recommend? I think that's the first. Oh, how well the Shark anti-hair wrap? Well, the ones I've used they work fine for, for me, but I only only one of my dogs um, produces hair. Molly doesn't shed hair very much. It's only Daisy, so I've got something in my eye. Um, and obviously, shedding hair isn't a problem with me. Um, but yeah, when I use them, because I, I use the cordless anti-hair app one the most, and it doesn't stay 100% clean, but there's never any occasion where I've had to cut hairs off. It's, yeah, it works for me anyway. Um, is there any other vacuum you don't recommend? Off the top of my head. Well, 
it's a bit of a, a niche or well, a bit of an oddball cleaner but I did I think it was a one concept and it's on my channel a red and black ball shaped thing that was the probably the worst I've ever used so certainly wouldn't recommend that um, I can't think of any that bad that, uh, I can't really think of any others, to be honest. Um, there's some I like better than others, but I mean, probably some of the really cheap, bagless supermarket ones, probably not worth getting. Uh, would I ever consider doing a comparison between the shark vacuums? Yes, I'd like to do more comparison videos. I know people like to watch them. Um, so hopefully going forward, I can do some of that. Um, I often don't think they're worth doing unless you're comparing very similar machines I mean it is fun to compare and I do like doing you know I probably will do comparing a really old cleaner with something modern I think they're fun to do um, I have a I have an idea of, of comparing all my all my cordless cleaners in one video but I don't think I've got enough space in one room to show all my cordless cleaners because there's so many of them it's all things I'm thinking about doing, you know, so yeah. Uh, right, thank you, Rockstar. M Spoon Vacuuming and Detailing. I have started a collection and YouTube channel of my own centered around vacuums inspired by channels like yours. When did you start collecting vacuums? And when did you start recording for YouTube? And did you think your channel would get as big as it is now? What is your favorite vacuum? Oh, a <laughs> question I dread. Right, uh, when did I start collecting vacuums? Well, probably... Uh, I don't know, I was still at school. Anyway, I don't know the age. Um, probably when I started getting pocket money or... I, I got given a lot, as I'm sure a lot of you got given old vacuums from relatives and maybe friends, mothers who said, oh, I've got this, you know, once they knew you like vacuums. Um, so I probably was, I, I, you know, I'm guessing maybe from about seven or eight. Obviously, I didn't keep all the vacuums I had then. Um, so yes, yeah, possibly. Where, when did you start recording for YouTube? I've no idea. You'll have to look back on my videos. I don't know. I'll have a look. <laughs> my, well, I can tell you when my first YouTube video went up, but it was a, a video. Uh, no, it was it was a TV commercial. I was on YouTube for long before that, watching other people, but um, let me just go into my channel then. Oh, hang on. My legs are going to sleep again. You should never kneel in such a same position for a long time. I'll just go into my, I hate what YouTube have done. I don't like this, if you've got a channel, I don't like this new YouTube studio. I keep going back to the old one. And one day they're gonna get rid of the old one and um, I'll have to make do with this new one, which I don't like. Legacy Classic, that's what I want. Quite, I was quite happy with that. And it, why change it? It won't let me click on it now. The so-and-sos. Oh, oh, it's done it. Right, hang on a minute. <laughs> Bear with. I'll just go into my video manager and sort my videos by oldest. I don't know if you can do that. View, public, oh, I can't do it can't do it but I can't I don't know it's a few years hang on let's try and this is taking up time let's pause the video while I find out when I first uploaded a video on YouTube oh dear right I'm back 18th of July 2012 at 1747 I uploaded the first video on this channel which was the Hoover Sensatronic cylinder vacuum cleaner range TV commercial from 1984 and basically all I was going to do, I was just going to share, um, all my vid all my channel was going to be, I was just going to share old TV commercials and other vacuum cleaner related stuff I'd recorded over the years. That was the intention. Um, I never, I never was going to show my face or speak. And I don't know what made me. I, I think what, some early videos I didn't speak because at the time, some channels I watched, they didn't speak in them. Um, and then I just started speaking, but I was a little bit 
wooden, I think it's safe to say, a bit wooden at presenting and uh, was trying to be something I wasn't, you know, in my presenting style. It was all a bit... And then I thought, oh heck, just be yourself. Just be yourself. You know, and I, that's what I've tried to be. And um, it just went from there, so... I felt like I got to the stage where, look, if they don't like me, if people don't like me for who I am, well, you know, who cares? And that's that's the attitude. You've got to have that attitude with YouTube. And you've, if you're putting anything out on YouTube or social media, it's easy. Well, it's it always you. You do get nasty people. All the, you know, I don't get that many, but I do get some, and they do make it. They do have an uh, effect. Because I get more, I get far more nice things said than nasty. But unfortunately, the way people are, the nasty things stick. And um, people don't get a chance to be nasty twice with me now, unless they change, you know, unless they up, you know, get another YouTube account and so they can be nasty under a different name. But they can't help being nasty and then they get blocked as well. Um, so you've got to you've got to you've got to take the negative as well as the positive. Um, so right, hang on. So I've done the when did I start? I've told when I started recording. Although yes, I can't. That's not when I recorded. I can't remember. Um, you know, it was. It would have been probably in twenty. Whatever I said that <laughs> I've lost the I've lost the video now. It wouldn't have been that, it was probably the year I put, I, you know, that year I started, um, did I say 2012? I've forgotten. Anyway. Da, da, da. Did I think my channel would get as big? It's not a huge channel, this. There are bigger channels than mine. I do want to get to 100,000, I have to admit. I'm not bothered about any further than that, to be honest. I just, I just would like a silver play button on the wall basically and if I can get that I'll be quite happy with that I'm not you know it's pretty niche what I do so it's not going to uh, I'm not going to get millions of subscribers um, but yes I, I I didn't think it would I was I was surprised when I got 100 subscribers and then sort of the next milestone was a thousand and I thought blimey and then you know 5,000 and then but the more it goes up, I don't really look, uh, I don't even know how many I have now, because I don't really look at that anymore. Um, but after you reach a certain number, I think after you go over 10,000 subscribers, you don't really bother, you don't look and check. I think 10,000 is a good, you know, 100 is a good milestone. Get your first 100, then 500, then 1,000. And then if you keep producing videos that people like to watch, then it'll just grow, go up and up. All you, for me, my best advice for YouTube, if you want to do YouTube, is just do what you enjoy doing. Try and be, um, try and present yourself as you are. Don't try and copy anyone. Be yourself. Do what you enjoy, because what you enjoy, other people will enjoy. I find that um, putting out videos that I like. Other people do like them as well. Don't try and be someone you're not and don't look at other videos and, and do what they're doing. I don't look at any other vacuum video uh, channels, I have to say, apart from two UK based ones that I subscribe to. They're the only two that I watch when they upload every, every time they upload. Very rarely now do I look at other vacuum videos unless I'm researching, but it's very rare because I don't want to be influenced by anybody else, to be honest. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, I didn't think it would be anywhere near this. But if I get 100,000, you know, I will die, die a happy vacuum enthusiast. Um, I don't have a favourite vacuum. That's, you know, I cringe when people say that. I can't possibly tell you. It's... No. I'm, I'm not going to answer that because I can't, there's no answer. I'm afraid. M Spoon vacuuming, vacuums and detailing. Keith Fletcher. Uh, yes. Happy New Year. <laughs> right. Hey Roger. Um, 
The other thing I was wondering, what do you use for polishing your vacuum cleaners? I have some I want to polish and shine up. I have some Kirby's, Dyson's, Rainbow's, and I would like to put a shine back in what you recommend. Thank you so much and have a wonderful night and happy new years. Well, initially, for plastic, I tend to use T-cut more than anything. Um, T-cut is my first thing I go to for the initial, um, you don't even have to, well, it's best if you give the vacuum a bit of a wipe first, get any dust and muck off. Um, but then you, I go over with tea cut. I, I don't know what country you're in, possibly America. Um, tea cut first, and tea cut takes off a very fine layer of finish. Um, so you've got to be careful when you're using tea cut over any printed, if there's, uh, you know, the brand name or any anything printed on the plastic, don't use tea cut over that because it might take it off. Often it will. Um, so that's my first thing. Uh, and then if it looks okay, then I'll just finish off you, oh, a car wax polish or uh, that Vuplex plastic polish spray. I use that sometimes and I can use that as a maintenance uh, polish just to give it, if I want to buff something up, just quick spray of Vuplex and buff it up. And you know, uh, for Kirby's though, you need a metal polish. I've, I've used Mothers and I've used some other brands uh, of, car, of car, car metal polish. Um, can't remember the make. Well, I think Mother's, you get Mother's polish. But yeah, unless you've got a machine, it's quite a lot of um, elbow grease needed for polishing up a Kirby. But yeah, I do certainly recommend T-Cut, if you have T-Cut where you live, to, for the initial, you know, T-Cut works wonders. That's often all I need is T-Cut and then often the final polish. You can buy electric polishing machines but I've not gone down that road I just sometimes you can over polish a vacuum and they because a lot of the vacuums I've got second hand I've had from brand new and I know that they weren't as shiny even brand new out the box so sometimes you can go too far with polishing and they just just look over polished you know what I mean sometimes it's best just to leave leave them don't go too far you don't want to sometimes especially I don't want like to see my face in anything and um, if, if you can see your face in a vacuum then you've polished it too much so I hope that's answered your question Keith David Ramshaw hi I would like a little shout out a little one just a little one and I have a quick question is the SIBO D4 premium oh that's funny I've got it or the other canister or upright worth buying um, now my Vorwerk canister has a fault on the cleaner head already. So that's a bit of a thumbs down for such an expensive vac. I think I've fallen out of love. I've got the upright here. Um, personally, value for money wise, you're better off. You're far, far better off with this. It is not as versatile. As a basic machine, if you're just talking about, if you buy the, uh, the Vorwerk canister, as the basic machine, you only get the basic machine and the power head. You don't get any small tools or anything, you've got to buy them. So certainly for value, you can get this around half that or even less than half the price of that before you even buy all the bits. For versatility, for all the things the uh, Fallwerks can do, yeah, that's good if you want all the tools, but then the price is going way above a thousand pounds. So out of that choice, has to be the SIBO, it's, it's very well made, um, a lot, lot cheaper. Um, so out of that, yes, but I do like the upright. Saying that, I do like this upright as an upright just for doing carpets and floors. But um, yeah, you pay your money, you take your choice. Hello, Garrett Hammersmith. Would it be possible to do a versus between a few of your Vothuk? It would be possible, Garrett, but whether I can at the moment is debatable. But yeah, you know, if, I'm, if I lose my job anytime soon, then I'll have more time to do a lot more things than I can do at the moment. But you know, fingers crossed. Well, not fingers crossed I use my, lose my job. Fingers crossed I <laughs> find the time to get some more videos done. Hello, Deb. Happy New Year, Roger, from Australia. 
Oh, every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end. And that is a quote from, is that Seneca, a Roman philosopher? Well, it's not a question, a quote there from Deb. Deb also watches my other channel, Roger's Bits and Doings. Plug, plug, plug. I do have another channel with two and a bit thousand subscribers. So that would be nice to get that to 10,000, possibly. Mandy, hello Mandy. I've known Mandy many years. Hi Roger, Happy New Year. If you could make, ooh, this is a good question. If you could make your own perfect Frankenstein vacuum cleaner, what parts from which vacuums would you use? And Deb has said, now that has to be the best question ever. It's the best question, but hmm. A Frankenstein vacuum cleaner, what parts? Well, let's start with the bottom, shall we? Uh, the base, the cleaning end. Mm. So you need something that cleans well at the bottom. So that could be a Hoover Senior, Hoover Turbo Power, Hoover Turbo Master. Mm. All right. What I would quite like is a clean air Turbo Master. So maybe with the, the base of a Turbo Master, with the wide cleaning path, the activator brush roll, instead of, uh, and with a new LED headlamp and um, a digital display, instead of the, the light shining through to make it look like a digital, a proper digital display, maybe even a touch control panel, a digital display at the head showing the setting and showing other things, you know. Um, but also twin motored. So it'd have a turbo master base, but twin motored. So it would have a separate suction motor um, and a brush motor, so you could turn the brush off. Um, and it would possibly have the, the bag compartment of uh, maybe a Miele upright that you can't buy anymore. Um, with a good good uh, fleece bag and filtration, but with a hose that stretches right to the stairs, and also another digital touch control panel, so you can control the motor speed and do other things, but all completely smooth touch control with swipeable, like Miele's later washing, latest washing machines that have just a, a swipe, you know, like you could do on an iPad. I'd have a control like that. Um, uh, auto cord rewind, uh, at least a 10 meter cable, quiet of course, light if it could be with all those features, um, swivel neck, so Turbo Power Master with a swivel head, a bit more sleek as well on the head. Um, yeah, that sort of thing. I think, um, again, if I, if I had to choose one vacuum, that Miele actually, that Miele dynamic upright is probably one that could cope as being your only because it is decent on carpets and floors and it has a decent toolkit. Um, yeah, something with old school beats as it sweeps as it cleans or agitator, activator, but with a clean motor design, high filtration, quiet. Ah, oh, that would be nice. So thank you Mandy for that very, very Excellent question. Big Boss Man 694, will you be getting a Dyson 360 robot vacuum? How many vacuums do you have? I don't know, Big Boss Man, over 200. Will I be getting? Yes, if you've watched, did I sh I've shown you this in the last vid? Yes, I have got one, finally. I thought I'd get one. Not a huge fan of it, to be honest. And I only got this because it's discontinued now and I thought I'd better get it before it's discontinued. It's ridiculous, it doesn't work in the dark. I know the new one does. The blue heuist, is it? Has some lights that come on when it's in a dark place, but I, I'm sure I've got some robotic vacuums that can work in pitch black without needing that. So it's, yeah, I like it for some things. I don't like it for others. A video will be coming up of this, but you won't see it cleaning much of this carpet in my living room because it doesn't like it, it doesn't work. So, yeah, I would love to just throw that out the window. Mm. Yeah, it's all right. I, I got it mainly because I just wanted to try it. I don't know if I'll be getting the newer version, to be honest. 
I don't think it's I prefer my Nito uh, to be honest and my my Roombas work better on this carpet as well so that's answered your question yes I will be getting one and I have got one Jake Halley again hi Roger how are you I'm fine thank you Jake I own a Kirby Avalier and Kirby Avalier 2, but I need a cordless machine for my hard floor. What would you recommend? Also, have you been using your Kirby? No, I haven't been using my Kirby, Jake. Any of them. I've only got three. Um, again, I'm going to have to say, you know, this video is not sponsored by, Sh by Shark, but a cordless machine for a hard floor, I would go for a Shark Duo Clean because I found those, those they clean hard floors very well, big particles and fine particles. Um, yeah, per, that's what I found personally so far. Bruce Solomon, Happy New Year, Roger. Happy New Year, Bruce, I'm saying this, and we're nearly in April. <laughs> Better late than never. Classic TV Man, 1981X. Hi, Roger, may I request you do a Kirby versus Kirby battle. That is your 1979 classic three against your 1981 tradition. Or what about my diamond edition? If I can ever get my, I'm going to sell two of my Kirby's to be honest. So before I do sell two of my Kirby's, hopefully I will do that or do something with them. Anyway, you'll see more Kirby videos at some point. But the only Kirby I want to keep at the moment is my Diamond Edition. That's my favourite Kirby. I'm not keen on the other two that I've got, to be honest. I do like the Diamond Edition, though. And maybe I'll get a newer Kirby at some point. Mr. Doctor Who 6. Hi, Roger. What is the coolest designer vacuum you've ever seen? And do you like Doctor Who? I'll do the Doctor Who first. I didn't, I didn't really like Doctor Who much growing up. I do remember Doctor Who growing up. I did start liking it when they brought Doctor Who back with Christopher Eccleston. So I did watch that and then he went after the first series and I thought, oh, I won't watch it anymore. And then David Tennant came in. So I thought, well, I'll give it a go. And then I, I liked the David Tennant Doctor Who series. So I watched all of them. Um, and then when the Matt Smith came in, I thought, oh, I don't like him. I'll give it a try. I gave Matt Smith a try, a couple of episodes, and didn't like it. And didn't watch any more Doctor Who since. And I've seen the odd one with that woman, don't like it. So the only Doctor Who I can watch and do quite like are Eccleston and Tennant. So that's Doctor Who. Um, the coolest. Oh, there's so many. I do think that, um, although it's not the best vacuum, I think the uh, Vorwerk Tiger is pretty, you know, pretty impressive looking. Um, we have a Sensatronic second generation with all the lights from the 80s. I do think that's uh, lovely looking, cleaner. Um, think, I'll try and think more modern, shall I? Something you can buy now. Mm. Well, the are all there you can buy now, can't you? If you've got the money. Um, <laughs> crikey, I don't know. Um, don't know. I don't know. I don't think I've really seen any new... Because the bagless cleaners, I don't like the look of them. They look fine when they're all nice and new without any dirt in, but as soon as you put dirt in them after a few uses, they look awful. Unless you're prepared to buy a new bin every couple of months, then they're always going to look dirty. So I don't think any any look cool, any bagless clean. I just don't like the look of the dirt in them. I mean, I think the Cebo, the E3 Premium, looks quite stylish. Uh, can't say that about many Cebos, the style. Uh, yeah, probably for modern that, that I do like the look of the tiger, the Vorvec tiger, but it's got some issues and it's too expensive for most people. It is way overpriced, really. Right, CA31. Hello, Roger. I've been watching you ever since I got a desktop computer about seven or so years ago. I was wondering if you can review the TurboCat Powerhead that is from VacuFlow. 
I'm going to say no, I'm afraid, to that. I really love mine. It's a little bit expensive at about $100, but however, I think it's worth it. It is so much better than the arrowhead you get with Henry's today. When Henry is turned on Max, you cannot hear him. Will Mr. Roger be drunk this year? I hope not. Mr. Roger hardly drinks and hardly ever gets drunk. And no, Mr. Roger can't remember the last time. I think I might have had a gin and tonic a few weeks ago with a meal, but one, you know, and I might have had the, an odd cider. One, and that's it. I don't drink, basically. Um, yes, I know of the... Um, I know of the uh, Turbo Cat. I'm not sure if it's widely or available at all in the UK. So I'll probably say probably I won't be looking at that. I'm sure you can see that on YouTube though. I bet somebody else has done that. Nico, I would love to see a video of your top 10 favourite vacuums. I might possibly do that. Probably be a video of me showing pictures of my top 10 because they're all over the place. So just to get my top 10 in one room would be an absolute huge feat of engineering. <laughs> They're stored in, you know, I've got my mum's loft is full. I've got a, a storage unit, a garage full and a loft full here. And they were, oh. One day when I scale down my collection, I'll be able to show you my favorites in one video. But at the moment, I can't see myself, I'm afraid, doing that in the near future. I know you don't have a favourite, but it would be fun to either see 10 of your favourites or 10 of your most used vacuums. Well, I'll, I'll just give you, my favourites will certainly, I think most, at least mm, five or six or seven of my favourites will certainly be Hoover cleaners. And um, they'll all be sort of pre-2000. They'll be from the 60s to the 2000s. There'll be quite a few 80s Hoovers in that. That's all I'm saying. Zachman07, what is your favourite cordless vacuum? Well, again, I'm afraid at the moment, shark fat, shark haters will not like me for saying it, but my at the moment, my favourite cordless vacuum is the latest shark that I showed you on my channel in December, I think it was. That's the one I, I use most at the moment. Even though I've got the Dyson V11 and V10 sat right near them, I don't pick them up. I tend to pick that shark up more than any other because I just like to use it. It's just just grab it and use it. Uh, Cormac McGee, when are you going to unbox the Hoover Eco G? Well, at some point, I've got tons and tons of Hoovers. I've even got the bagless Hoover Eco, not the bagless, the cordless Hoover Eco G now that I've got to unbox. I've got loads that I haven't even, un I've bought and haven't unboxed. So I'm going to hopefully say this year. Victor, I can't pronounce your surname, uh, Gavrilovic, is that Gavrilovic? When will we see the old Mila that exploded? Well, I'm not sure, but you did see a, a newer one I got of that, if you saw that video. So I got a new version of that that didn't explode. So hopefully that was um, enough, but I'm hoping to get that working at some point, but I can't say when you'll see it. I might end up selling that one at some point anyway, but I will make another video before I, I do sell it. Carter Perry, how many vacuums do you have? I don't know, this has been asked again. Over 200, that's all I can say. No idea. Muck, 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 I can't pronounce your name, I'm afraid. Muck, muck, tars, is that? Reviews, what is your favorite cylinder vacuum's performance and how easy is it to handle and upright? Oh, crikey. I, I can't, I, you know, I can't. My favourite cylinder... My favourite cylinder vacuum's performance. Well, if you're talking performance in a cylinder, it probably will be that SIBO for performance. It's not very easy to handle, though. And upright. Mm. I do like... I, don't, I do like the... Um, can you see it actually? We just about see it. I do like the uh, Volvec VK200 as an upright. That is very easy to handle um, and pretty good performance. It's handy that I've got two vacuums that uh, <laughs> behind me that answer your question. Um, when will you be unboxing the pneumatic NuVac? 
<laughs> I've done it. So there you go. I'm here again. I'm about to cough. It's not coronavirus, but I still have a cough. I might be able to suppress it. I'm here again. And what is the vacuum you've had in your collection for the longest? The one that survived probably the cull I had in the 90s, I just sort of, because it probably was in bits, is a Hoover Dirt Searcher Junior. That's probably the one I've had the longest, I would say. The Hoover Dirt Searcher Junior. Oh crikey, another one. Hello there, I've been watching you since I was four and that was when you started this channel. I've loved vacuums since I was like six months. Please may I have a shout out? Well, you've had several. Um, and I have a toy Dyson DC24, toy Henry, older version, and a Kasdan toy washing machine. Love your videos, thank you so much. All right, there we go. You've had some questions answered and a shout out. Dean Sharp, happy new year when it comes, sir. Thank you, Dean, I'll take that as happy new year. 2021 let's hope <laughs> let's hope I mean I can't believe what's uh, I don't want to I can't believe what's going on in this world at the moment making this video talking about vacuums but obviously there's things going on <laughs> that uh, make talking about vacuums seem a little bit silly but life goes on and my liking of vacuum cleaners hasn't stopped uh, but yeah <laughs> Let's hope we can end this year and look, look back and think, right, we got through it. It was scary. We learned from it. We're better people. Let's hope. But at the moment, I'm not hopeful. But anyway, <laughs> that's for another video. Robot Gamer, what is your daily vacuum cleaner? And Happy New Year. Well, as I said, I don't really have a daily, but my daily, well, I suppose at the moment, my daily is the shark. I'm gonna have to go and get, I'm gonna get the shark and show you what I'm using as my daily vacuum at the moment. There you go, that is, and genuinely, you know, that is what I'm grabbing to whip around the house at the moment. Well, saying that, I did use my Dyson V11 uh, with the small uh, motorized head for my stairs a couple of days ago. Uh, but I just grab, I just grab this one because it's the one that's out and I, I just, it's easy to use and it works on this plush carpet, which the Dyson struggles with. Um, you know, let's have a look at the actual yeah, because I was asked, I think it was in this video, if this uh, it stayed clean. And as you can see, you can see I have used it. This it's grubby. So there is some bits I have to say, but they are they are sort of cut. It's nothing like you know the older sharks that it would wrap the hair around. So there is little bits, but on the whole, you know, it keeps fairly clean. There's some bits of muck there. It could do with a bit of a clean now because I've not uh, serviced it or anything. Um, yeah, I need to take the brush roll out, so the, the roller, and give that a wipe. I've nev never cleaned the filters, I should have, but I have to say, for uh, the, the, a lot of criticism I hear from people over the sharks is that the filters dirty really quickly, and so far, I haven't cleaned the filters. I don't know if I've vacuumed them, but they don't. I will show you. I don't know what it's going to be like now because I have used it quite a bit and never, I've never washed these filters yet and I've been using it sort of off and on for a few months. So let's have a look. Well this is the top filter. You can see there is a little bit of muck come through. That's the other side. So the sponge filter is what you'd expect to be the dirtiest. Look, that isn't bad. I haven't, I think I might have vacuumed it once, but it doesn't get anywhere near as dirty as the older versions. I don't know if it's got any diff, I don't know if it's got a few cyclones in it, but certainly it's a huge improvement of the, uh, from the other cordless machines. I'd still recommend washing it once a month, 
but you can get away with um, slightly less maintenance. That's what I found in my personal experience. You know, um, it's a little bit bulky for inside the car, but just as my grab and go daily vacuum, I can honestly say that that is what I've been using. And you can see from the, the muck on the base, you know, it does get used. So that's currently my daily grab and go vacuum, this shark cordless. Okay, I'll just uh, do a couple more uh, questions or comments, and then I'm gonna have to go into a third video. Um, I plan, I think I'll put these out over, possibly over the weekend. I'll do them, you know, it's not gonna be ages before you see the next one. You'll see it uh, possibly tomorrow if you're watching this when I put them out. So just two last uh, comments. Alex Nater, when are you going to review the Cobalt Cylinder and finish Upright Review? <laughs> At some point, I can't, you know. There's so many as, I've, you know, I've no, ex well, I do have some excuses, but um, I would like to get um, a review of both uh, Cobalt cleaners and show all the tools in use. I have made a video of some of the, um, uh, the uh, polster boy and the uh, mattress cleaner i've done videos of that but i just haven't got around to sort of editing and and finishing them off so um yeah i will hopefully say this year alex uh last comment and then uh, tune in for the next video if you haven't been mentioned yet tyler brigham says vax vax is my favorite hoover so on that note from tyler it's goodbye for this video um, please join me for the next video following very soon. Bye for now.